Black GIs, having helped free the world from oppression, returned home to a country that still treated them as second-class citizens. Ralph Ellison and James Baldwin captured black males' frustration and rage for all the country to see. While the country was modernizing rapidly following World War II, blacks faced the same old problems of intolerance, segregation, and racism. Black servicemen returning home from the war brought with them the knowledge that they had stood up to such intolerance and fought to free the world from such racism. As a result, a new black writer emerged, an outspoken and forceful black man. Ralph Ellison was the first of these powerful new black writers. Born March 1, 1916 in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, Ellison was a literary descendant of the Harlem Renaissance led by Alan Locke. Yet his style and voice could not have been more different. In the Harlem Renaissance, black artists, writers, and composers glorified their unique culture and expression by celebrating their African-American heritage. But Ellison delivered a stark and eloquent message about the plight of young blacks to the American people. In his groundbreaking novel, Invisible Man, published in 1952, Ellison, following the emotional realism of J.D. Salinger, wrote about his alienation, disenfranchisement, and invisibility as a black man in very frank terms. Telling the story through the perspective of an anonymous American black man, Ellison explored northern and southern forms of racism and their chilling effects. Ellison's protagonist, cut off and marginalized, is invisible in a literal and figurative sense. Not only do people refuse to see him, but also his worth as a man is invisible. The book's candor about the plight of blacks in American society helped foster the civil rights movement led by Thurgood Marshall and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. in the 50s and 60s. Ellison was a talented sculptor, musician, photographer, and college professor teaching at Rutgers, Yale, the University of Chicago, and New York University. He died from cancer on April 6, 1994. Another talented black writer exploring the plight of black Americans in the 50s and 60s was James Baldwin. Born in Harlem, New York City, on August 2, 1924, Baldwin, like Ellison, was a child of the Harlem Renaissance. And like Ellison, Baldwin spoke openly about racial conflict and injustice in the United States. But whereas Ellison's characters tended to be educated and dispassionate, Baldwin's were emotionally charged. A novelist, short story writer, playwright, and essayist, he was best noted for the way his characters personally explored interracial conflicts, as well as complex social issues such as being homosexual and interracial relationships. Baldwin's first novel, the semi-autobiographical Go Tell It on the Mountain, tells through the main character, 14-year-old John Grimes, Baldwin's story of conflict with his stepfather and a religious conversion at age 14. Set against the background of 135th Street and Lenox Avenue in Harlem, with flashbacks of black history in the South after the Civil War, it explored the dilemma of a northern black family but it was Baldwin's novels, essays, and dramas written in the 1960s that made him the major literary interpreter of the struggles of black Americans. Baldwin, like Ellison, was also a teacher and was on the faculty of many Western Massachusetts colleges. He died in Paris from cancer on December 1st, 1987. The Beat Generation writers, Kerouac, Ginsburg, Burroughs, Ferlinghetti, and Kesey, turned a generation of Americans onto a new way of living, a new way of thinking. And as they wrote, their words spread through the country like wildfire, thanks to the new mass medium, the paperback book.
By the 1950s, the mass media society had arrived. Television and paperback books made knowledge available to everyone. Mass media offered a freedom that no American decade had ever offered before. A flood of information available to everyone. But at the same time, a new group of writers saw this mass media society from a different perspective. A much more sinister perspective. It was a society that beat people down. It was a system that tried to force all Americans into the same mold. To think alike and act alike. This new group of writers would take a name that reflected this beat down by the establishment. They call themselves the Beat Generation. No author reflects the purpose and style of the Beat Generation better than Jack Kerouac. The, the, the Beat Generation was a, a generation of beatitude and pleasure in life and tenderness. Born in Lowell, Massachusetts on March 12, 1922, his novel On the Road is itself a road map to understanding how the Beat Generation started and where it was going. Originally written in 1951, Kerouac could not get his book published until 1957. The semi-autobiographical novel is an account of beat characters who crisscrossed the United States in search of personal fulfillment. The novel is narrated by Sal Paradise, who represents Kerouac. The other main beat characters are Carlos Marx, who represents Allen Ginsberg, and the novel's protagonist, Dean Moriarty, who is based on Kerouac's friend, Neil Cassidy. Moriarty is the quintessential beat hero who rejects society's conformity and materialism and embraces the wild rhythms of jazz, the unpredictability of the drug culture, and the freedom of fast cars as he searches for the mystical religious experience that will give him the personal fulfillment he desperately seeks. Other Beat Generation authors who captured the mood against what they saw as the dull conformity of American life were William Burroughs, Lawrence Ferlinghetti, Ken Kesey, and Allen Ginsberg. Ginsberg's long poem, Howl, written in 1956, became an anthem for the youth generation's struggle against a dehumanized and repressive society. William Burroughs's satirical jabs at modern society, as well as his vivid portrayals of his drug addiction and homosexuality, manifest in his most famous novel, Naked Lunch. Written in 1959, it made him a hero of the beat generation and the youth culture. In his most famous poem written in 1958, A Coney Island of the Mind, Lawrence Ferlinghetti poked fun at life's conventionalities and made the plea that people release conformity and timidity and embrace a greater life that is out there. Ken Kesey, the youngest member of the Beat Generation, became famous as a member of the Merry Pranksters, a group that traveled throughout the U.S. in the 60s. Kesey's two best-known novels, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest and Sometimes a Great Notion, echo Beat Generation themes of individualism against repressive conformity. Establishment critics stated that the Beat Generation authors promoted anarchy and obscenity. But in reality, this group of authors tied into the Baby Boomers generation's dissatisfaction with what it saw as America's false values of a square society. As a result, the Beat Generation, led by Jack Kerouac, set the stage for the free speech and civil rights movements of the 50s and 60s, and later for the peace movement to end the Vietnam War. As for Kerouac, he died from alcoholism on October 21, 1969.